Here's the brief news from the world over this week. It was a new tone and tenor for the American president. In a televised address from Capitol Hill, President Trump set aside his tough talk and pointed to a new chapter of American greatness, calling on Congress and the country to unify. We are one people with one destiny. We all bleed the same blood. We all salute the same great American flag. And we all are made by the same God. In broad strokes, President Trump laid out his agenda, the destruction of ISIS, creating American jobs, increasing military and infrastructure spending, and health care reform. The speech was widely hailed on the right and left as Trump's best ever. More on the Trump speech in our next segment. And President Trump's immigration reform policies appear to be taking a little more shape, and a comprehensive proposal could soon be at hand. Meeting with news anchors ahead of his address to Congress, Trump said he was open to legislation that would allow some undocumented immigrants to stay in the U.S. The proposal would allow those not convicted of a serious crime to earn legal status for employment and pay taxes. Trump's plan would not necessarily involve a pathway to citizenship, with a possible exemption for the so-called dreamers, young people brought to the U.S. illegally by their parents. He supposedly told reporters that the time is right for the comprehensive bill as long as there is compromise on both sides. In his speech to Congress, Trump said U.S. legal immigration policy should protect American workers and be merit-based. He said we such a system will save nation. billions in taxpayer dollars, raise all workers' wages, and help struggling families, including those of immigrants, to enter the middle class. And U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced he would recuse himself from any government investigations of the Trump campaign. He made the announcement following controversy over meetings he may have had with the Russian ambassador to the U.S. in the lead-up to the 2016 election. In a press conference on March 2nd, Attorney General Sessions had this to say. Let me be clear. I never had meetings with Russian operatives or Russian intermediaries about the Trump campaign. During his Senate confirmation hearings in January, Sessions originally denied having any conversations with Russian authorities, but acknowledged this week that he had two brief meetings with the Russian ambassador in his capacity as a U.S. senator on the Armed Forces Committee. We'll continue to monitor this story. And a second week of heavy fighting continues in western Mosul, the last urban stronghold for ISIS in Iraq. According to reports, coalition-backed forces have effectively trapped Islamic State militants, cutting off both supply and escape routes. They are now within a half a mile of retaking the city's main government complex. More than 220,000 people have fled since U.S.-backed Iraqi troops launched an offensive to recapture Mosul in October. Of those, more than 175,000 remain displaced. U.S. officials believe the mission to defeat ISIS will take another six months. There is one visible sign of progress in Iraq. This past week, in the village of Telekuf Teskwopa, just outside of Mosul, a giant cross was erected atop a hill, marking the return of the Christian faith. Chaldean Catholic Patriarch of Baghdad, Louis Sacco, visited the village, blessed the cross, and celebrated the first Mass there in over two and a half years. A good sign. And violence against Christians continues in Egypt, as hundreds of Coptic families have fled from Sinai amid a series of killings and a call by ISIS to target the minority group. Egyptian President al-Sisi has instructed the government to shelter Christians there after three Christians were shot dead last week. There have been six targeted killings in the past month. Islamic State militants are attempting an insurgency on the Sinai Peninsula. ISIS video released Sunday calls for violence against Christians, including a rant by one of the militants responsible for the Cairo church bombing that killed 29 people in December. 
And Brexit hit a slight roadblock this week. On Wednesday, the House of Lords voted that European Union citizens should be guaranteed the right to stay in the UK after its exit from the EU. By a vote of 358 to 256, Parliament's unelected upper chamber inserted the clause into the authorization bill that demands the government begin exit talks with the EU. The change must now go to the House of Commons, where it is likely to be rejected by Theresa May's conservative majority. There are approximately three million EU nationals in the UK. The government has said repeatedly that it plans to guarantee that EU citizens can remain in Britain so long as UK nationals living elsewhere in Europe have the same guarantee. And the Associated Press is reporting that Pope Francis has personally intervened in sex abuse cases by reducing penalties against priests convicted of abuse. Citing Vatican sources, the AP says that on numerous occasions, Francis overturned decisions by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, the office charged with sanctioning abusive clerics. These interventions come after personal appeals to the Pope. The most notable case, an Italian priest laicized by Pope Benedict and convicted by an Italian court on multiple counts of abuse, was later fully restored to the priesthood by Pope Francis. And the local bishop where Medjugorje is located said this week that the purported Marian apparitions at the site are false. Bishop Ratko Peric of Mostar Duvno made the statement on the diocesan website. The timing is curious. Just two weeks ago, the Vatican announced Pope Francis was appointing a bishop to handle the pastoral needs of the townspeople and pilgrims who visit Medjugorje. Bishop Peric has already said on numerous occasions that the Madonna was not appearing in Medjugorje. In 2014, a special Vatican investigative commission concluded a four-year study of the alleged apparitions and passed those found findings to the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. However, to this date, the Vatican has not made an official comment on the results of that study. And a new monastery that is home to eight Benedictine monks from Oklahoma has been opened in Ireland. This past week, Bishop Michael Smith of the Meath Diocese signed a decree establishing the Benedictine monks of perpetual adoration of the Most Holy Sacrament of the Altar at a former convent in the town of Stanmullen. It is believed to be the first new monastery in Ireland since 1536, when King Henry VIII first moved to suppress monastic communities. The Benedictines came to Ireland from Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2012. Now, I realize that we are in Lent, but I wanted to share some video with you. I guess it's of my pre-Lenten preparation. Mardi Gras in New Orleans. My pal Jim Caviezel was king of the crew of Bacchus this year. We had the most incredible time. Now, most people don't realize that these Mardi Gras crews are philanthropic organizations. Bacchus supports Children's Hospital in New Orleans. So Jim and I went there to hand out doubloons, T-shirts, and some Will Wilder books. What an incredible group of kids and parents. Such courage they have. Then, the Sunday before Mardi Gras, we took to the streets atop the King's Float to look out at the expanse of families on the street with kids on ladders and whole neighborhoods cooking out together was really overwhelming for us. It reminds me, and should remind all of us, that Mardi Gras is truly the largest organic community festival anywhere. Such lovely people. Where else do people literally throw millions of dollars into the streets to bring joy to their fellow man? Many thanks to the Brennan family for making it happen and for their warm hospitality. There is no place like home, whether it's Mardi Gras or Lent or any other time. Now, as many of you know, the second Will Wilder book in my series, Will Wilder, The Lost Staff of Wonders, hits bookstores on March 7th. Tonight, I want to announce a special sweepstakes we've started to celebrate the release. We're giving away what we call a Wilder Adventure, an all-expense-paid trip to Walt Disney World. Just go to willwildersweeps.com and register. This contest is only open to those in the continental U.S. 
and I hope you have a wilder adventure with your family. All the info is at RaymondArroyo.com. My tour schedule is there as well. I'll be in Buffalo, New York on Friday, March 10th at 7 p.m. at St. Christopher's Church on Niagara Falls Boulevard. All you folks in Canada, come on down. Then on Thursday, March 16th, I'm in the Cleveland area. I'll be at the Barnes & Noble on Chagrin Boulevard at 6.30 p.m. Will and I cannot wait to see you all on the road. Thank you.